So we want our students to elaborate and use vivid language in their writing, but how do we go about getting them to that next level in their own writing? Stick around, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hi, I'm Robin Mellum, children's book author with HarperCollins and Disney Hyperion, and I'm also a middle school teacher. I teach writing. I have a writer's workshop that I have set up that is student-led. It's all about motivation, how to get our kids excited about taking their writing to the next level. And the skill that I'm gonna talk about today is vivid imagery, and it is number one, two, three, four, five on my list of skills that I teach on rotation during my workshop. It starts with voice. That is the most important one to get, get them off the ground at the beginning of the year. So go back and make sure you watch the other videos if you haven't, if you're new. Um, I have a video on each one of the skills that I teach. So from voice, we move into hooks. So it gets their reader interested in what they're writing about. Sentence structure makes their writing interesting to read and flow better figurative language, which is actually a little bit easier for them to grasp because they can add in a simile or a hyperbole here and there and kind of sprinkle it in and make their writing stronger. But this skill, it takes a little bit more practice and a little bit more understanding of how to do it precisely and in a way that's going to make your writing really pop. Vivid imagery, I teach in three different like sections. One is we start with um, specific nouns. So it's describing a thing like a car, but it, there's a reason why you might describe that car in a certain way. A certain truck does have rust spots or is it a really fast red Lamborghini? And then how will that inform us about that character? Because that character chose that car for a reason. So the specific noun has to do with the story. It all kind of feeds into it. My editor would always say, everything needs to have a payoff. <laughs> so you can't mention something unless there's a payoff to it. It adds to your character. It develops the story more. Don't just throw stuff in there because you want to. So you got to really pick the ones you want to use. Then we talk about strong verbs. That is something that, I mean, a lot of teachers, we've always worked on strong verbs with our students, right? Um, but it's something that is, it's for, sh for showing and not telling. So if you pick a strong verb, that really describes the scene better. You burst into a room as opposed to opening the door, but you don't wanna burst into the room unless there's a reason why you're bursting into the room. If you just slowly open the door, that's fine. You can slowly open the door. So getting them to understand how these like um, pieces of vivid imagery play into their writing and, and choosing the ones that will really have payoff, like my editor said. The third thing I do, and I know we've worked on like, having adjectives in writing, but I do what's called leveled up adjectives. So it's not just, oh, okay, I'll throw in a couple of adjectives here. It'll make it all spicy and so much better. But what happens with an adjective is that they serve as like speed bumps. When you're going down a road, an adjective will slow you down. And so it makes your reader like slow down for a minute and look around at this scene. Like, why are they describing this in a little bit more detail? So you want to pick the ones that will give you the most bang for your buck, the best ones, um, so that it makes it purposeful for your reader to slow down and take a look around here. So just adding in three, if you just like start throwing in adjectives, your reader just gets really bogged down because think of each one of those as like a speed bump. So I'm going to show you all how I do leveled up adjectives in a little bit different way and how I teach this concept of vivid imagery. I'm gonna take you to your, my screen and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so this is how I teach vivid imagery. I'm gonna take you through some of the slides that I share with my students. We first start by, you know, I, I like to use a hook when I start my lesson. So we kind of just start looking at images and figuring out what does this have to do with what we're learning today. So I like to look at car and then look at different kinds of cars. <laughs> and talk about the importance of why we would want to use that car and the description of that one, how um, when you say car to someone, they might have one of these basic ideas in their mind, but what you were really thinking was this like amazing, huge Ford truck. Well, we need to know that. And is there a reason why you or your character has 
this amazing, huge Ford truck. All right, so I take them through, hold on, let me get down here. These three things are what we do. And each of these lessons are kind of similar and they even could take like a couple of days each. This is a big lesson to break up um, throughout the week, you know, a couple of weeks. So I start with strong verbs, then we get into specific nouns and then leveled up adjectives. I'll show you in a minute what that means. So with strong verbs, um, we're looking at the difference between a weak one and a strong one. That's kind of the big important part here is why is eating weak, but inhaling strong. And then we talk about like, if you're going to inhale your food, what is going on in your life that might make you inhale your food? Um, and then that is actually a way of showing and not telling. Eating is kind of more on the tell side, inhaling and munching and gnawing and devouring. Those are all on the show side, which is good. Um, I use matching and then I use like a gradual release model where I start some sentences for them and replace the verb. And then they have to replace the verbs from there. And then another one on this one, because I just think it's really important for them to really understand this uh, strong verbs section where I give them a choice. They then pick which one is the stronger one. So which one would make sense in that situation? Like if you're starving, would you nibble or scarf? So it all depends on what's going on in your life at that time. <laughs> and then there's all these little check things in here. So here I have them go on and, and try to write a sentence like about a sleepy dog. What strong verb could you use there? What might the dog be doing? Um, and what, like what would be the reason why you would have that particular verb. You could do this, either give them the slides and have them write on it. You could put this on the screen, have them jot down their answers first in their notebook and then share out um, or share with a partner. And then they share out if they found one that was diamond sparkling writing. That's also in my ebook. So check that out below if you haven't seen my ebook yet. And then I like to pull out mentor passages where they see the pros using strong verbs. So they see it in action. So these, um, these particular passages come from the Westing game. So they have to find the strong verb in the Westing game and figure out why it's a really good conversation to have. This is one of my favorite things to do also is to apply it by, if you have a bunch of books in your classroom, have them grab some for their table start flipping through and just searching for strong verbs. It's like a big scavenger hunt. And they, oh, I found one. It's super fun for them to find them. They write the sentence down in the title of the book. See how many they can find in a certain amount of time. It's fun. And then next you do the same thing with specific nouns, um, vague versus specific and why this would be better. And in what situations would you want to describe that you have vintage Club C Reeboks? <laughs> what's going on in your life that that's super important to put into your story. Um, they do matching. And then again, there's more gradual release with the nouns, um, small chunks of writing that they do it, just one sentence at a time. So it's just a slow bit by bit progression until they're doing this in their own writing. And then a passage from the Westing game, this time trying to find the specific noun in that passage. And then finally, once they've found other specific nouns, we move on to leveled up adjectives. So this isn't just, it, there's a difference between an adjective and then like a really good adjective because you want to make it worth it to use this adjective in here, okay? So there's regular, red, sad, happy, surprising, big. That's kind of boring. So how can you be super specific about the way you're going to describe this object um, that is worth it. And you in your reader's mind, they can picture that. Drop the mic shocking is like you can picture um, the entrance as being drop the mic shocking as opposed to, well, it was really surprising when we walked in the room. Um, you want something that they can create a vivid picture with. So I do more <laughs> uh, matching with some weird things in our row and then gradual release in the practice from there. And then once they start, they've done all these single sentences all throughout this lesson, and they've found a leveled up adjective um, in the Westing game, and they have found some in books in your room or in the library. Um, so now you want them to try and do a mixture of the three. Can they, uh, taking the example of a knock at the door, 
can they now write a short little scene? I like to say scene instead of story because so many get hung up on that. They're like, oh, I didn't finish the story. And I'm like, I don't want you to finish the story. I just want you to write. So I tell them to write a, a scene. Like think of a, a trailer of a movie. We don't see the whole thing. We just see the most important part. So pick a scene. There's a knock at the door. What verbs, nouns, leveled up adjectives could you use there? And then have them highlight them in different colors. Share out in their trios and then find the diamond writing um, from there. And then have them try and use that in their writer's workshop writing that they do. And so I give also, there's some extra uh, sheets in here if you wanna print these out, if you're interested in these slides. Now I want you to, um, if you're interested in this topic of doing vivid imagery, this is a perfect pair with how to um, take this lesson and then pivot to narrative essay writing. And in my next video, that's what I'm gonna go over is how do you take this particular lesson and then apply it to that essay. And I break down for you how I do that whole thing in a 10 day block and not in a big, huge writing <laughs> nine week thing. We don't do that. I have a totally different system for that. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe so that you get a notification when that video goes up. And I have some freebies down below for you. I have the complete introduction to my ebook about how I run this workshop and get my kids writing like crazy and loving their writing program. Um, you can just read the whole thing and see my whole background, how I came up with this idea and why. So many teachers are using this and telling me that it's like made a huge difference already in their kids' enthusiasm for writing. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, so thanks for sticking around and I will see you in the next video.